Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Trash Mountain. Doesn't sound good at all. College chaos. Well, that's what's happening everywhere in the colleges today. And free speech is expansive. <laughs> Sigma Tiger all up in your grill. What's going on today? Let's see. Trash Mountain. New Delhi chokes as Trash Mountain fire spreads hazardous fumes. Oh my good lord. Uh, well, just looking at it looks terrible. India's capital choked on toxic fumes Tuesday as a thick and pungent haze spread from a fire at a towering trash dump. The latest in a series of landfill blazes that authorities have struggled for years to bring under control. Sections of Ghazapur landfill in New Delhi burst into flames on Sunday, causing dangerous heat and methane emissions and adding to India's growing climate challenges. Yeah, it has uh, like 88 of the 100 most polluted cities on Earth. And, and that is the biggest trash pile on Earth, Trash Mountain. And it's on fire. So what's the deal? Climate change... Did, yeah, climate change did it, for sure. <laughs> Definitely was climate change. Uh, by Tuesday, the blaze at the capital's largest landfill had largely been put out, but people living nearby complained of throat and eye irritation due to lingering acrid air, according to local media reports. The cause of the fire remains unknown. Landfill blazes are often triggered by combustible gases from disintegrating garbage. Methane. You can see it's all smoking here. And look at the size of it. These are excavators. Here is a photo of the blaze. Quite a nice picture. Every year, as mercury levels soar during New Delhi's scorching summers, the city's landfills burst into flames with rotting waste, adding to India's climate heating methane gas emissions. Methane is the second most abundant greenhouse gas after carbon dioxide, which is more potent contributor to climate crisis because it traps more heat. India creates more methane from landfill sites than any other country, according to the GHG SAT, which monitors emissions via satellites. Well, we talked about uh, the other day uh, how climate change may or may not be real. Like, what's the deal? There's this level, this uh, the rate, the fall rate or something like that. Anyway, Trash Mountain of Gaspar is one of just some 3,000 Indian landfills overflowing with decaying waste and emitting hazardous gases. According to a 2023 report from the Center of Science and Environment, a nonprofit research agency in New Delhi, standing at 65 meters, 213 feet, it is nearly as tall as the historic Taj Mahal. The Gabaraj Mahal and eyesores that towers over surrounding homes, harming residents' health. Yeah, of course. Imagine living next to this thing. Look at it. And then you have like a cow that looks like it's starving. Methane emissions aren't the only hazard stemming from landfills. Over decades, toxins have seeped into the ground, absolutely, polluting the water supply for thousands living nearby. At Bas Baloswa, one of Delhi's other large landfills, residents in 2022 complained of deep, painful skin gashes and respiratory issues for years of living near the hazardous mound. Who would have guessed? Struggle to find a solution? Yeah, what do you do with it? I went to India before, and the streets are just as bad as that landfill. I'm surprised. Like, what, did they clean it up since I was there? Because that stuff was everywhere. And people were just, like, eating food and throwing it on the ground. So the problem with uh, the climate is the people just being stupid. Maybe there's nowhere to put it. Maybe you should elect a better mayor who promises steel oil drums and people to come pick them up and dump them out. But yeah, this is what it looked like when I was there. Literally. Yeah. So there you go. If you're going to India, get a nose plug. Alright, what's going on? College co campuses all over happening now. Mass chaos breaks out at college campuses across the United States as pro-Palestine protests intensify. Pro-Hamas. Columbia, Harvard, USC, University of Texas at Austin, and others are getting swarmed by protesters. Police at USC are taking out their batons as protesters are turning violent. Texas state troopers have been deployed and reportedly made dozens of arrests at the University of Texas of Austin. Harvard Yard has also been taken over by pro-Hamas protesters. They're being set up a camp university threatening to take action. Let's have a look at this.
Resistance is futile. All right, so you can see clearly what's going on. It's mobs of people. They're pushing back against the authority, uh, the police at, or security at this stage. And uh, what do they want? They want Israel to go away and they want Palestine to be free. And uh, there's been interviews with some of these people at the protest. And like, what are you doing here? Uh, do you know what you're protesting? And they're like, uh, uh, yeah, we're here. We're against the school. And they're like, okay, well, like, what, why are you here? And they're like, well, we were over at Columbia and they said they needed us here. So we came here. Why are we here? And they're just like, yeah, they don't have a clue. So, like, you know, they're fighting for something. Here's an important clip. New York University business professor. Young people are pissed off at everything. They don't see a future. This is an important clip. The man or woman isn't... That is the social compact breaking down. People aged 30 to 34, 60% of them in 1990 had one child. Now it's 27%. People are opting out of America. They're not optimistic about it. They're not having kids. Young people aren't having sex. They're not meeting. They're not mating. The pool of emotionally and economically viable men shrinks every day, which lessens household formation. So we have a real issue. Young people are enraged. So it turns every cut, every movement into an opportunistic infection because, quite frankly, they are just pissed off. They look up. They see wealth, exceptional wealth across my generation and people in certain industries, and they are really struggling. Their purchasing power is going down, and the incumbents create artificial scarcity on campus. We take pride in rejecting 90% of our applicants, so the incumbents who already have a degree see their degree go up in value. We get very concerned with housing and traffic once we own the housing. Housing permits are, are sequestered from young people. Housing prices have gone from 290 to 420 in the last four years. So a young person, a house, stocks that I don't own skyrocket in value. Let's have COVID relief and flush the markets and take assets way up because of a million people dying would be bad, would be tragic if I got less wealthy. And I were doing it on their credit card. Young people have every reason to be enraged and every issue they see, they look up, they get angry and they see someone doing better than them. And then every day it is speedballed in their face that they are failing, that they are not doing as well as everyone Fatally. around them. We have lost the script. Our kids are more anxious and more depressed and more obese and more addicted. And we have made a purposeful decision to let this happen by ensuring the people around this table stay wealthy at the cost of young people. Just Boom. So there it is. The people in these universities, they're latching on to this human rights issue that's happening in Israel, okay? And uh, Gaza. Basically, the Gazans are occupied by Israel. So who owned the land first? You know, who was there first? Who was here first? To, uh, like, you know what I mean? Should we just give up everything we have and give it back to the natives uh, who had absolutely nothing? They were nomadic tribes with no buildings, no farming or agriculture, anything. And that's why they in initially called them savages because in the colonizer's mind, people who live like this are like animals, right? And we are sophisticated. That's what they thought. So they came in and this is what we've created, people. We have this and now we have institutions where kids are there fighting for people in another country that they'll never meet, see, or do, or have anything to do with instead of seeing exactly what's in front of them, the forest from the trees, and saying, good Lord, people, why don't we turn around and march to Washington and stand outside of Joe Biden's big white house and say, we demand change. We absolutely demand it right now. Because a million people in Washington like that, children like this, would have a larger effect than on the university saying, we don't like what's happening. But guess what? They're not going to do anything. Okay? Just because it's easy to go to where they're familiar to, and then they can go back home afterwards. It's all good. We got the internet. It's great. No big deal. Good luck, people. Like, the reason why you're so poor off is because you have no foresight and your head is down in uh, the dirt, your phone all day long, and you're just consuming other people's content. And you have no content of character. Boom. Jewish New York professor lashes out the brainwashed students protesters and said, it, if I said lynch the blacks or burn gays, I'd never work again. And that's a fact. Can you imagine? And this is what they're saying at the protest. People are like, oh no, these are peaceful protests. Like, it's okay. They're saying anything. No, like they've 
totally uh, taken over, and that's what they're calling it, takeovers, the setting up encampments, barriers to not allow people to enter the space at all, whether you're a journalist or Jewish or work at the university, it's a complete takeover. And uh, they're saying some crazy wild things, absolutely abhorrent, horrific things that would never be acceptable if you fill in the blank with uh, black, gay, or Hispanic, or trans, any of those things, totally not cool. But you could throw white in there, or colonizer, instead of Israeli, or Jew, and you're totally good. No problem. So that was the same gentleman there, uh, just wanted to make a point of that quote that he made that wasn't there. Anything else important there? I can tell you if I went to New York Square with a white hood on and said, lynch the blacks or burn the gays, yeah, you'd be canceled, like, right there with a bullet to the head, I would imagine. Yeah, all right. I think young people have a healthy gag reflex on what people our age think. Two, I don't think Israel has draped itself in glory the last 20 to 30 years. They've shifted from being kind of the David to the Goliath. Yeah, not necessarily untrue. Yeah, so this guy's actually got a pretty good point there. He's a little bit off on his... Uh, his verbiage, I don't know how I like that, but uh, yeah, he's out there, he's expressive, and he's saying it how it is, so that's always great. Australian senator says Elon Musk should be in jail, and the Kiwi thrown away. And here she is, uh, both of them actually, uh, interesting like pictures they've chose for that. Australian senator has called for ex-owner Elon Musk to be jailed for life, refusing to adhere to the Australian government demands to remove a video of the brutal attack on a Christian bishop in Sydney last week by an apparent Muslim extremist. Yes, yeah, so you don't know what's going on. The uh, e-security commissioner uh, in the Aust uh, Australia land decided that uh, this video, which shows an attack, which has been deemed a terrorist attack by police, of a Muslim attacking a Christian uh, preacher or minister, whatever, he was at a, uh, a church giving a sermon, and um, they're like, no, take it down. It could be too damaging, okay? It could be way too damaging. So instead of saying, you must uh, slap a warning, a viewer discretion advised, graphic material, uh, you know, no, take it off. So Elon was like, okay, fair enough, whatever. We'll eliminate it for the Australian IP addresses. No way to access it. And they're like, no, 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 no. Nobody should be able to see this. Nobody at all. It is absolutely too damaging to the human psyche to witness something like this. So after Bishop Mar, Manuel, Mar Mar Emanuel was attacked at the church in Sydney, the video taken from a live stream quickly went viral. Australian officials and politicians from both sides said of uh, this... Uh, both sides of the spectrum immediately called for the footage to be removed, yet Elon had refused to do so, saying that X is a platform for freedom of expression and it will not censor content that is not illegal. Australia's so-called e-safety commissioner, Julianne Inan Grant, an unelected official, had ordered both X and Meta to remove the footage of the stabbing under the Online Safety Act passed in 2021, which empowers the e-safety department to demand the removal of so-called Class 1 material. X was ordered by the Australian Federal Court on Monday to block all users from viewing the footage. The platform temporarily complied with the order in Australia while taking out a two-day injunction, but asserted that global takedown order violates freedom of speech. The Australian Censorship Commissar is demanding global content bans, states Elon. We have already censored the content in question for Australia, pending legal appeal, and it's stored only on our service in the U.S. Fair enough. Concern that is if any country allowed to censor content for all countries, which is what Australian e-safety commissar is demanding, then what is to stop any country from controlling the entire internet? Yeah. So this is where they're leading. Canada has this crazy uh, internet thing now, uh, legislation that's getting put through. And basically it, it says, like, if you say anything that's going to hurt someone's feelings, then uh, you're going to get in trouble. But if they think you're going to say something about them, then they can report you. You'd be like, this person was like, I'm getting this feeling, like they've said something before and I, I've got a really deep, dark feeling inside of me and it, it's causing me anxiety. Number one, I can't sleep, I can't eat. I mean, my whole life is disrupted. And guess what that person does all day? Nothing, because they're on social assistance. <coughs> creating garbage content. In the comments, Sky News Independent Australian Senator Jackie Lambie, she is the one uh, who is the e-commissar, that Musk is creating hatred by ignoring requests to remove harmful content. I think he's a social media knob with no social conscience. He's absolutely no social conscience. So here she goes and attacks. That's 
typically the liberal way. I don't get what I want. I'm going to spit my tit out, my little dumb tit, and I'm going to scream and cry and point my finger till I get what I want. Someone like that should be in jail, and the key be thrown away. Of course, yeah, that's what you should definitely do to people like that. That bloke should never have a right to be out there on his own ideology platform and creating hatred, showing all this stuff out there to our kids and doing all the rest. It's not creating hatred. It's showing that there is hatred in the world. Because what are you supposed to do? Like, just pretend that it's not there? Fantasy Lambie? The senator for Tasmania also declared she would be boycotting X. Good for you. Don't want to see you there anyway. Check out my X at Sigma Tiger News. A funny video just got posted. I'll be switching off X today, and I'll be doing that before I get to the airport this afternoon. And I suggest that our other 226, there's 227 members of parliament, do the same thing. Show him that you mean business. Because it's going to make a difference with 200 people out of a billion. An Australian senator has called for ex-owner, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, there you have it. So uh, the uh, Prime Minister, Albanese, also asserted that Musk is so out of touch with what the Australian public want. No, the Australian public servants. Okay? You're not serving the public. You're serving your own interest. And you're also using derogatory comments to like lash out at people who disagree with you. So... Ad hominem, you're uh, full of fallacies. Your logic fails the argument. So this has been a distressing time, and I find the bloke on the other side of the world from his billionaire's establishment trying to lecture Australians on free speech. Well, I won't cop it, and Australians won't either, because I won't let them. Uh, claimed Elon Musk thinks he's above the Australian law and is trying to lecture Australians on free speech. No, he's trying to allow Australians the opportunity to witness what free speech is and uh, if you don't like it you can swipe it's even easier you don't even have to plug your ears or run away like you used to if the town crier was out saying something you didn't like literally you just go whoop but no that's so much emotional distress and it's so damaging to see that a muslim will try to kill a christian because he doesn't agree with what they have and you're trying to lock someone up or stating someone should be locked up for stating their opinion so you are behaving exactly like the Muslim teenager, but with a different uh, action. You're using your words as violence. And he used a knife. Boom, Bishop stabbed during Sydney church service backs. X's legal case to share the video of the attack. Yeah, it's of me. I was attacked. I want the people to know about it. So there you go. A Sydney bishop was stabbed uh, repeatedly in an alleged extremist attack blamed on a teenager has backed ex core owner Elon Musk bid to overturn an Australian ban. So uh, 2,000 people at the Assyrian church sparking a riot which 51 police officers were injured and 104 police vehicles damaged. There you go. It's a lot more than a stabbing, wasn't it? I do acknowledge the Australian government's desire to have the videos removed because of their graphic nature. However, noting our God-given right to freedom of speech and freedom of religion, I'm not opposed to the videos remaining on social media. Boom. All right, let's see exactly what's going on in Australia. Uh, Muslims marching. The government of Australia doesn't want people to know what is going on or how bad it has really become. Otherwise, the people might become alarmed and vote them out. Yeah, I interesting. Let's go ahead and have a look. And they look quite upset. All right, IDF hits 40 Hezbollah sites. Gallant says groups South Lebanon command decimated. And there's an image. Uh, so Lebanon is north of Israel, and they have a terrorist organization there as well. Surprise, surprise. And uh, they're Muslim and Islamic. Militants, whatever you want to call them. Uh, yeah, and they hate the Jews because their doctrine... Uh, states that if you're not Muslim, then you should die. And if you don't follow Muslim, then you should die. And if you leave Muslim, Islam, sorry, then you should die. So, and their book is uh, fraught with controversial, contradicting, downright absurd things. So get your copy of the Quran and have a read, and get your copy of the Bible and have a read, and you decide which one is better. You decide which one uh, is more peaceful or which one, whatever, you decide. But don't just choose a side because what you think is going on, what you're being shown. 
So anyway, half the Hezbollah commanders in South Lebanon have been eliminated, and the other half hide and, and abandon South Lebanon to IDF operations. There you go. So they're taking out them as well, and Israel's done playing. They don't want to play around anymore with any of that stuff. All right, Sigma Tiger, all up in your grill. Like and subscribe. Sigma Tiger signing out.